next, I cannot leave out the Dodger. So this has made our trip so nice because it used to be flat. There was just a flat roof on this, but Ben made this fiberglass Dodger. It took a lot of time. He added these compartments um, so that we could keep our door panels on. We added a little nice grippy top to it. That has been so nice. So now Ben can actually stand up in the cabin. Yeah. The rest of us could stand up, but it was close. It's very roomy. We got extra windows and light comes in. Yeah, light comes in. It's magnetic. Uh, so we sewed up these curtains, put little magnets in them. So we can close it up if we need to. Put our sunglasses there. We are working on trying to get a Dodger built. It's going to be a soft Dodger. And this is our enclosure system for around the front of the poles, the frame that we built. We found the material it was an old boat cover. We tested it out and it looked like it was fairly waterproof. So in the spring of 2021, we decided to start making a template of what size we would want the Dodger to be. I have wanted to, for a while, build a hard Dodger that's going to go on a 26-foot Hunter, and uh, I ended up ordering some of this honeycomb core uh, from, had it shipped in from Florida, and they ended up cutting it uh, in thirds so that it could ship a UPS, uh, but that wasn't a problem for me. Uh, that was actually uh, significantly cheaper to do it that way. So what I'm planning on doing is put one layer of uh, chop strand mat with a layer of resin and let that harden up and then it's still fairly flexible and allows me to then work with it later and add more layers uh, once I get the structure set the way I want to. Well unfortunately the, uh, the last time I was laying this stuff up uh, I ran out of fiberglass resin. The other really unfortunate part is I don't think I mixed in enough hardener. I thought it was a lot hotter than it was and I probably should have mixed in a lot more hardener. So I'm going to do the last little bit over here. So you can see that. The last little bit right there. And uh, hopefully I can put a heat gun on this stuff and make it all kick over. And I don't know, maybe it'll kick over at the same time and I'll be better. So there's the, uh, the model we went off of. We've drawn our lines in here. We're gonna try to uh, do some cutting now. The honeycomb core cut rather easy with one layer of chop strand fiberglass on one side. It was now time to add a layer to the other side to stiffen it up. I used a small dense paint roller to apply the resin and work out the air bubbles. It worked as a great applicator. I would clean out the roller with acetone or lacquer thinner, then hang it over a trash can 
and the same roller lasted me for the entire Dodger project. I'm super happy. Obviously, I got to clean up the edges. Um, I'm going to try to do a little bit of cutting on the top uh, and actually doing, doing the curve on the top tonight. But uh, just came to check on these pieces and wow, they got a lot, a lot stronger than they were. So, super happy with that. Got the two pieces for the top of the Dodger cut and I ended up cutting a, uh, an arc uh, so that the center is one inch uh, and the, from side to side is 30 inches is going to be uh, the upper part after I put the uh, side walls of the Dodger on then that that arc is going to be 30 30 inches from inside to inside with the one inch arc. I'm going to cut this piece and we're going to do a chop strand, then the woven uh, mat, and then another chop strand over top of that to at least get started. And we'll figure out and see how many more layers I do. Um, I'm not sure how strong it's going to be. Right now it's only got one layer of chop strand on the bottom. And I think I'm going to probably at least do a woven and I don't know how I'm going to finish them off, whether I'll do Maybe I'll finish off the woven on top. Sometimes they say it, it fares better uh, with the chop strand on top. I don't know. I, if, the, if the weave uh, lays down nice and flat, I've had good luck with that. But I'm certainly no expert in this, so we'll see, uh, see how it goes. As this project continued to develop, it was time to figure out the sizing and spacing of the windows. Uh, kind of messed up. What I thought was going to fix the problem didn't fix the problem. It just made it uh, just made it hard on top, but it, it delaminated when we figured that out when we cut the windows out. It started flexing on this side. The other side, that you can tell just the color, it, just, it was all good. It stuck on there really good and hard. In fact, even this stuff, as you were peeling off the other, there are some spots that stuck and you can kind of see how it broke the honeycomb. I'm, I think the cord is still good. It's still a little tacky, sticky here, but I think the new resin and new fiberglass will roll right onto that without a problem. But we had to pull off all of the, the previous layer of fiberglass because it was going to delaminate no matter how many layers of stuff we put over it. So we pulled it off and now we're going to uh, put on brand new layers. So learn my lesson, got to mix up the batches right, pay attention to directions, all that kind of good stuff. But uh, don't go off your memory. The older you get, the worse it gets. Anyway, so we're gonna switch over to time lapse and hopefully we'll be done here in the next few minutes. Well, it looks like the repair that we made yesterday uh, is going to work. I'm just going to just barely touch up uh, the edges here with the, the grinder with the sanding bit on there just so that, it's, that it doesn't have the extra sticking over on either edge. And then I'm going to mix up some just Bondo body filler. Um, Probably would be better if I actually had the cabasil and could mix it in and make a hardened resin, but uh, this stuff will work for now. It'll it's just more or less so that the the fiberglass has something to go over it, um, and uh, the fiberglass is what's going to be the hardener. But that way the the resin doesn't uh, fill in all the holes on the edges there. So plan on doing the bottom edge and then around the windows. And the top edge is going to have the next uh, the the cover over it, so I don't have to put it on there, but. I'm going to mix up a small batch and see how this goes, and, uh, but i got to hit the bottom here with the uh, grinder first.
hard, you're starting to harden up. Man, hardened up really fast. Well, try again. Using a scrap piece of OSB and some simple 1x2s, I was able to form this simple jig that would allow me to precisely adjust the dimensions to guarantee it would slide into the Hunter 260's track that was meant for the companionway cover. Well, we should have had the camera rolling, but uh, Stacy and I were trying to get a little bit more of this project tabbed in I can kind of show you now what we did right in that corner can't even hardly probably see it but we ended up adding tabbing show you underneath here from about oh, about here and we just did the we did the corner, you know, three or four inches on both sides. Um, so anyway, we woke up, uh, or <laughs> wow, I think I woke up too early. But we were we were putting it on, and we had resin dripping all over and all over my arms. Not ideal. Should have had some longer plastic gloves because it was just kind of trying to get it tucked away underneath this portion but we have all of this uh, in place so that hopefully it has the perfect shape and I created our own little jig um, but yeah that's uh, more or less where we're at just trying to trying to uh, Get this done we did these two corners too you can kind of see where that tabbing is uh, on that side and on that corner so now I'm going to try to uh, take off the extra here I'm going to try to take off this corner here and make that back to smooth and a rounded edge I had built in a little extra uh, just to be able to uh, to do that and kind of see kind of see the extra hanging over there but I'm just going to cut that off and uh, yeah be able to get this project a little closer to being done using an oscillating tool for this step worked very well to cut through the fiberglass core while following the contoured angle of the sides. Some of you may be wondering what I'm doing with these bags and uh, I just found it was super hard to dispense the uh, my bondo here without um without the bags it tended to work really really pretty well i just cut a tiny little hole out of it and use it more like uh like you would with the decorating frosting tip or something and, and squoosh it on there it kind of gets it into all those little cracks and crevices i'm not even sure if i have to do it but i'm guessing the air behind in behind all these things isn't isn't all that good for the for the uh, fiberglass cloth to be on it probably would drip out the resin and then harden without resin on it so I'm going to uh, err on the side of caution I'd rather not because I think actually I, I probably got to go run and grab some more bondo from the store but uh, I'm going to so that's what I'm doing I'm, I'm cutting this uh, just a little bit I'm going to mix up some of the uh, filler here put it on the put it on the edge that way I can kind of have a nice rounded uh, curve there 
and uh, then tab this side in too. That way I've got something structural. And then uh, we'll be on to fitting it and seeing if it, if it fits on the boat uh, before continuing this project. So uh, that's what's up next. If anybody has ever done any work with fiberglass, they will know how much sanding is involved. Trust me, we spared you watching video sanding after sanding. And I would suggest, if you don't like sanding, don't start working with fiberglass. I got the sides and uh, both sides laminated on last night and this front top edge here I think we're just gonna leave that lip and I'm gonna add some of that bondo underneath here on this crack as well as filling in this gap and we'll just come over there and then do a radius on the bottom and a radius on top and just leave the edge as is, um, not exactly what I was originally going for, but I think it'll leave the structure the way we want it um, and go from there. So we're going to also have to put some Bondo here on the front um, to be able to round off that corner. But uh, yeah, so that's about what I'm going to do now. Try to add the Bondo to it and go from there. So uh, like how it's coming along, but got a long ways to go. So. We're going to get to it. Enjoy the time lapse. Last night, uh, I finished up the front here. Show you that. The uh, got that all the way around the bottom, and then back up on the top. Kind of show you how that turned out. Not perfect, but it actually took the curves really well. Didn't have any major air pockets, so. Front is the same thing, just really, really turned out pretty nice, super strong. So I like that. And now we are going to put the this uh, lip on the edge here. We want to put that lip on there. We're gonna put these screws in so that it uh, holds it more or less right straight, sucked up tight. And we'll put the uh, the bondo in their corner and then we can glass that later so that's what i'm going to do now
In this shot, I am adding three layers of glass to the cross members on the roof of the Dodger. They happened to be the only pieces of wood on the Dodger and allowed me to use barrel nuts to secure the tracks for the companionway hatches. I typically tried to do three layers of tabbing at a time, chop strand, woven, and then another layer of top strand, pre-cut the corners for any of my radiuses, and also would pre-infuse the resin into the glass, which I happened to have set up as a table just outside of the camera angle. This method often allowed me to get all of the air bubbles out and was much faster than sanding in between individual layers of glass. Okay, hon. How strong do you think I made it? How strong? You gonna stand on it? You wanna stand on oh. it. Oh. Well, you be the lovely lady. I could like my hand? Down. You got it. I, I don't know. Okay. Like right there even? Sure, just step up from the side. Oh, there you oh, go. Okay. I wouldn't walk all the way out to the other end. What do you think? Nice. Doesn't feel squishy at all. Feels solid. Yay! And Boomerang says, uh, whatever. <laughs> Stacy is cutting tin to lay under the glass so that it would be magnetic around the windows on the inside. The only two problems were after cutting the tin, it curled, making laying the fiberglass flat rather difficult. And had I buried rare earth magnets, it would have made a much stronger magnetic attraction. As she was cutting the tin, I was cutting the pieces for glassing the insides of the windows. Well, um, it's been a little while since I've actually uh, recorded. Um, there's been a lot of sanding, a lot of resin added. Um, it's not perfect. Um, all these little tiny darker dots are all what should be fared out. I don't have any fairing compound and frankly, we're leaving in less than three weeks on our trip and I don't have enough time to try to finish this project along with everything else I have. So it is going to be as good as it's going to be, which is not the way I like to do things, but uh, well, when you run out of, you run out of time and I don't have any fancy fairing compounds, so the way I would have to do it would be to put a thin coat of resin on again and sand off again. And uh, I've been sanding this morning for more than two and a half hours. So, uh, I think we are ready to go. I started with uh, 60 grit, then went to 80 grit, now down to 120 grit, and uh, I think it's as smooth as it'll go. I'm actually fairly, fairly happy with it. It could be, could be better, but you know, it's uh, it's for our boat, so it can be as good as I want it to be, I guess. Anyway, um, so now we are going to start the gel coat process and uh, get it going, see how it goes. Well, I uh, put the second coat of gel coat on the top of the Dodger and the sides of the Dodger this morning, early this morning. 
but I think if I do a nice job of light sanding it looks it looks like it turned out really well so hopefully that will be good enough and uh, and then anyway we're going to uh, start cutting out some of the windows I got two small ones cut out but I've got to cut out uh, a total of what, seven windows so I've got five more to cut out so I've got my dimensions I'm gonna mark those and uh, trace them out and then cut them out with the jigsaw here so that's what's, uh, that's what's up next, that's what I'm doing. Okay, we got the windows cut, and uh, now we're going to flip this guy over. It's still, I think, supposed to dry until tomorrow morning, so we aren't going to stand or buff off the, the uh, gel coat yet. But uh, we're going to flip it over so we can look and see what we can do. I'm planning on probably gel coating a little bit uh, down there by Stacy, and then uh, probably painting the rest of the inside with some good just interior rust -Ole or exterior rust -Ole paint. So, anyway, um, here we go. See how flipping it over. How you doing? Good. Uh, over to the, you know, right there. Yeah. There we go. To adhere the windows to the Dodger, I used 3M VHB tape and would use painter's tape to align the windows. I also used some 3M spray adhesive to ensure that the self-adhering foam deck material would stay stuck to the top of the Dodger. Our final window to install was the aft window, and it took special care and a few piano hinges to ensure that no mosquitoes could find their way in when it was closed. One of the final challenges was to fabricate stainless tabs to secure the Dodger to the existing mounting holes of the original companionway hatch. Using the original hinges as a template, I bent the tabs until they fit flush on both the deck and the Dodger then bolted the tabs down to the original deck holes first, then drilled and through bolted them to the dodger using backing plates and locking nuts from the inside, also using butyl tape to leak proof all of it.